We're now going to introduce a really interesting form of conditioning, which is how we're going to usually deal with conditioning for pairs of discrete random variables, and that's the conditional PMF. So say we have a pair of discrete random variables. Okay, let's call them um, X and Y. And we've already described them by some joint PMF. We already have this PMF. We call it PXY. And we observe that y is equal to this little y. So maybe this is a measurement that we've performed. And what we want to do is update um, our joint P PMF, and we want it to include this information. So this is a form of conditioning. All right, so what we're going to do is condition on the fact that random y is equal to this little y, and we're restricting the joint PMF to pairs where that's true. And we're also going to rescale it by dividing by the probability that it takes this little y, which happens to be the marginal PMF evaluated at that value. So the conditional PMF, P of x given y, right? So we write this notation with a bar to remind ourselves of conditioning. Of x given y, it's given by this formula. So it's the joint PMF divided by the marginal of y in the range and zero otherwise. Okay, and that's it. It's very simple. You just take the joint PMF divided by the marginal PMF of the thing that you've observed. We can also define the conditional PMF um, of y given x. It's the same definition, except now we're dividing by um, the marginal of x, because x is what we've observed in this case, but it's the same definition. And let's just look at this definition and see why it makes sense. So let b be the event little x, okay? So we already have a notion of conditioning for PMFs, and this that's this conditional PMF of y given the event b. Okay, now in this case, the event b is a little bit different. It's not y falling into b, it's x falling into b. And so let's write that out. Probably that y is equal to little y given that x falls into b. Well, x in this case is just the value, right? So we just write that out. So this is actually the intersection of the two conditions divided by the probability that x is equal to little x. And that's true whenever this denominator is positive. This top is actually just the definition of the joint PMF, and the bottom is the definition of the marginal PMF of x. And that's whenever the marginal is greater than zero. Now this happens whenever um, x is in its range. So the range is where x has a positive probability, and the joint PMF is positive if and only if the pair xy falls into the range, and that actually guarantees that x is already in its range. So, you know, if we replace this condition that I've highlighted in green, the marginal PMF of x is greater than zero, with just the condition xy is in the range, then that's going to be enough. And that's our definition of the conditional PMF. The conditional PMF satisfies the basic properties of a PMF. So you can just think of it as a PMF. So it satisfies non-negativity. So it's always greater than or equal to zero, no matter what you plug in. It normalizes. So if I sum over x, then I'm going to get one. And if I sum over y, the conditional PMF of y given x, I'm going to get one. Notice I'm not summing over both x and y because for the conditional PMF of x given y, y is considered fixed. Similarly, for y given x, x is considered fixed. Additivity, if I want to know the conditional probability of falling into an event, given that y is fixed to a value, I just sum up the conditional PMF over that event. And I can do the same if I fix x to a value. All right, our conditional probability techniques also apply. So if you remember, we had this multiplication rule. That just tells us the joint PMF can be written as the conditional PMF times the marginal, and you can expand that either way. So you could have x given y times y, or y given x times x. The law of total probability tells us that we could get the marginal by summing up this thing we got from the multiplication rule, so the conditional times the marginal. And finally, Bayes' rule tells us that if we want to flip conditioning, all we need to do is um, divide by the marginal and multiply by the marginal using the appropriate one in each case. Okay, let's come back to this example. And what we wanna do in this example is calculate 
the conditional PMFs. That's our only job. We had this example in the last video, and we're going to write these as a table. I'm just going to remind you that the conditional PMF of X given Y is just the joint PMF divided by the marginal of Y, and the conditional PMF of Y given X is just the joint PMF divided by the marginal of X. Now, these are only um, going to be valid when the denominator um, is non-zero. So when the denominator is positive, that's okay. And when the denominator is zero, then we're just going to remember we should just set the conditional PMF to zero. So sometimes it's convenient to just write it like this without the cases if we need to fit it in, but we have to remember we shouldn't be dividing by zero. Okay, so how are we gonna get this conditional PMF table? Well, I take the value of the joint PMF at one, one, so that, that first coordinate, I write it down. So I write one third, and then I divide by the marginal at one, which is one third. Then I take the next entry of the joint PMF, which is zero, and again, I divide by one third. And then I take the next entry that's zero, and again, I'm dividing by one third. So I'm just plugging into this marginal of y, and I get this evaluation. For the next one, I take the second row, I get a sixth divided by two thirds. Again, I'm going to get here a fourth. I'm gonna get a sixth here divided by two thirds. That's gonna be another fourth. And finally, a third divided by two thirds that's gonna give me a half. So throughout, what I did is I took the joint PMF table and I divided by the marginal, evaluated at the value that I was looking at in the table. Let's do it again. Now I'm gonna do Y given X, okay? So again, I'm starting with the joint PMF. Now I'm gonna divide by the marginal of X. So here I have X equals one, so I divide by one half. So I get two thirds. Now I have a sixth divided by, again, a half, because x is equal to one. So I'm kind of holding x to one value and going through. Zero, I'm just gonna get zero. Zero, I'm just gonna get zero. Again, now I'm gonna get a sixth divided by a sixth for x equals two. That's gonna be one, a third divided by a third for x equals three. Okay, so um, one thing to keep in mind here is normalization means that the rows have to sum to one and in this one, it means that the columns have to sum to one. Okay, and let's take a minute to think about why that's true. So for the joint PMF, the entire table sums to one. So you can just check for yourself that a third plus a sixth plus a sixth plus a third is one. For the conditional PMFs, we're thinking that one value is being held fixed. Let's look at this table on the left where Y is being held fixed. What that means is once I fix Y to a value, let's say one, if I go across the row, the probability should now sum to one, and it does. I have one, zero, zero. Then the next row, I have a fourth, a fourth, a fourth, sorry, a fourth, a fourth, a half, when y is equal to two, that sums to one. In When I've fixed x, then I'm just summing up over the column because that's where x is fixed. So two thirds plus one third is one, zero plus one is one, zero plus one is one. Okay, well, we saw the mechanics of how that works, but what is this useful for? And one of the most useful uh, applications of a conditional PMF is a hierarchical probability model, All right? So what we could do here is we could express um, P of Y given X using a family of random variables. And we'll say that the parameters of this family are actually a function of X. And X we are also going to generate using this marginal P of X. Okay. This should remind you at a very high level of what we were doing with these conditional probability trees. So instead of writing out the raw probabilities of every um, outcome or event, what we were doing is expressing the probabilities via these conditional probability trees. This is kind of the same thing, except instead of a conditional probability tree, we just have conditional PMFs. So we're saying first I generate some parameters randomly, and then using those random parameters, I generate another random variable that takes those um, parameters to decide the uh, family. Okay, let's look at an example. It's gonna be a lot more clear. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna model the number of photons, Y, observed at a detector as Poisson lambda. But lambda is gonna be a function of X. X is going to be zero if the sample is absent and one if the sample is present. And we're gonna say, for now, the sample is present with probability one third. 
So this tells us overall that x is Bernoulli one third because it's zero one and the probability of seeing one is one third. Okay, that's straightforward. We've done things like that before. Let's get back to y. So we're gonna say the average number of photons that you see is two when the sample is absent, that's some background noise, and four when the sample is present. And we're gonna model that by lambda is g of x, which is two when x is equal to zero and four when x is equal to one. This is just some particular function of x and it happens to incorporate this problem information. Okay, so the way that we think about this is that y given x is equal to little x is Poisson g of x, okay? So lambda now is this particular g of x, and that is okay for a conditional PMF. Let's write this out. So we're gonna write the Poisson formula, but instead of lambda, I'm writing g of x everywhere. And it's okay if you don't remember this formula, you can just go and look it up and convince yourself all I've done is plugged in g of x wherever I saw lambda. And I have the range of x and y there. Okay, so often it's helpful to simplify this. If we just have a couple of cases for x, I'm just going to evaluate this formula by plugging in g for each case of x. So first I'm going to have 2 to the y over y factorial e to the minus 2 when x is 0, and 4 to the y over y factorial e to the minus 4 when x is 1. And we can just remind ourselves this is when the sample is absent and this is when the sample is present. So this is just a concise way of representing um, this probability model that has the same family, but the parameters of the family depend on the conditions that we see. So if the sample is absent, we don't see as many photons. If the sample is present, we see more photons. And with this technique, you can start to model pretty complicated um, engineering scenarios by just putting these simple model families together. Okay, so let's work out some probabilities for this case. And just to have it in one place, I'm going to write the marginal PMF for this Bernoulli x, which is Bernoulli one-third. So now we have all the information in one place. So what's the probability that y is equal to 3 given that x is equal to 1? Well, that's just plugging into this conditional PMF, 3 and 1. I take this one, I look up the case where x is one, I plug in y, so I get four to the three over three factorial e to the minus four. That simplifies to 64 over six, e to the minus four simplifies to 32 over three, e to the minus four. Okay, what about the probability that y is equal to three while x is also equal to one? So that's and, this comma means and or intersection of the two conditions, right? So the bar above means given, condition on the fact that we know x is equal to 1, whereas down here this comma means what's the probability that simultaneously you get y equals 3 and x equals 1. So this we can get um, using the joint PMF, but we don't have that directly. What we do have is the conditional and the marginal, and the multiplication rule in this case lets us multiply those, y given x times probability of x, to get the joint PMF. And I just plug in the values three for y and one for x. That's gonna be 32 over three e to the minus four times one third, and that's 32 over nine e to the minus four. Finally, what's the probability that y is equal to zero? Well, normally we would just plug into the marginal of y, zero. We don't have the marginal of y. So what we can do is use the law of total probability, and what that lets us do is sum over the undesired random variable, okay? So here that's x, and we're summing up over the range of x, and we're using the multiplication rule inside. So I have the probability of y evaluated at zero given x times the marginal of x. In this case, x can be zero or one, so I just plug in those values. So I have um, the PMF at zero, and then the PMFs at one, okay? And now I'm just gonna look up values. So that for the case where x is equal to zero, I'm using the conditional PMF when the sample is absent, so I have two to the zero over zero factorial. And then for x is equal to one, I'm using a different val uh, value there, so I'm using four, and so I get this. And then I'm putting everything together, I get two e to the minus two plus e to the minus four over three. That's something we're gonna be seeing more of as we go along. We'll definitely be expressing our um, observation models using conditional PMFs where the parameters are themselves random.